Okay. Uh, okay, I'm here with uh, Jim Knoll and Ken Wright, two uh, wonderful friends of mine. And uh, they came up from San Diego. Uh, I came down uh, along with my wife, uh, June, to meet up in the Redwoods. And so we're here in Miranda, and we spent the day photographing just off the road. Uh, it's been a wonderful day shooting in the Redwoods. Tomorrow we're gonna go to uh, Rockefeller Forest and burn some more film. So <laughs> I just wanted to kind of let everybody know these are two of my favorite photography friends. Jim is my hero because at 92, he's still shooting ultra large format and large format. And Ken uh, shooting large and ultra large format as well. And so this was an important trip for all of us uh, to reconnect and, and, you know, shoot some film. So uh, thanks, guys, for, thank you. Oh, thank you. You know, for coming up here and, and uh, driving. And uh, Jim's son-in-law, Steve, in the background there, was their driver and uh, has, uh, has really uh, been a great, uh, a great <laughs> addition to, uh, to our group here. So... We're just going to kind of, there's so much history here, uh, photographic history, that I think people don't really understand. Because Jim, especially, and Ken have been at this for a hell of a lot longer than I have. And they go back to the days, the early days of, of film, and still shoot film today. So um, we're just going to swap some stories and see how this plays out and just let it roll. So... We were talking about the Westons here yeah. a little bit ago, and and I was supposed to teach a workshop up uh, up there last year, and COVID canceled that. Yeah. But before that, uh, I met Kim and Gina on a shoot that we did at the Oceano Dunes. Okay. Now this was set up as a tribute meetup for my friend Per Volquartz, who had right. passed away. So somebody just decided to put this thing together and make it a get together in honor of pair and we're all going to meet here and it it totally got out of control i wasn't gonna i wasn't even gonna go but i didn't want my friend's name associated with something that was going to get drugged through the mud and there was people that didn't know him that got involved and it yeah. just got to be a mess well anyhow one of the guys who wasn't really part of our group who was a digital shooter but wanted to shoot film, thought he was a film photographer, wanted to be part of the group, he decided he was gonna hire nude models. Oh boy. Okay, so <laughs> he got a hold of Gina Weston and hired the Weston models. Yeah. I told him in advance, you don't hire any models until you get signed commitments from the people, guys who are coming up there that were gonna work with models. Yeah. Well, every one of the guys was a landscape guy. Yeah, they're shooting. They want to shoot sand dunes. So I decided, okay, I, this is just becoming a train wreck. So I I paid some money to work with a nude model. We go out on the dunes. And the light was flat. It was overcast. It was cold. It was windy. This woman's freezing her ass off in the dunes. And I said, you know what? I said we're done. I said, come on, cover up there's no way I'm going to put you through this. And she was willing to yeah. keep going. I said, no. Nah. So uh, at, towards the end of the thing, uh, one of the nights, Kim brought Edward and Brett's prints yeah. to show, which she would do at these meetings quite a bit. And so, you know, you have two icons of photography showing prints. He had the easel up with the light and everything. And, uh, and part of this meeting, we'd all bring prints to share. So Kim shows these prints. And then Kim goes, okay, well, who's next? Who's going to show their prints next? Now, okay, now, who gets to go after Edward Weston and Brett Weston? Yeah. So yeah. Who, who got elected? <laughs> Me. Oh. Good. <laughs> okay, so I, I'm, like, I'm like, okay, I need a minute. So I went out. I went out in the kitchen, and I'm walking around, and I'm talking to myself. I'm going, and two of my friends are in there, going, "Oh man, I'm glad I'm not you." And <laughs> yeah. I'm like, "Oh jeez, that's like, that, are you kidding me? I I have to show my work after after what I just saw, you know, the yeah. prints. And I think they were printed by Cole. I, I I'm not printed sure. Cole, most likely. Yeah, most likely they were printed by yeah. Cole Weston. And so, 
you know, I had and a, your prints are carbon. No, my, my prints are carbon. Okay. So, so I am just like, I go out and I said, okay, well, you know what? Just, I mean, just go for it. I, I sure. thick skin. It's like, show, it. show the work. Who cares? You know? So I, I had some nice prints and everything and, and uh, you know, Kim was looking at them and we're all looking at them. It's like, wow, wow, wow. It's like nice. And, and then, you know, at, 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 at the end we wrapped up, I think maybe one other person took out one print and shot one print. Yeah. That, that was, that was the end of print sharing. And afterwards, you know, Kim, Kim goes, you know, it's not about the process. You know, it's about yeah. the, about the image. Yeah. And he said, you know, said your work's stunning. So it's got some really, really wonderful, wonderful yeah, work right. here, and mm -hmm. and the process helps to accentuate that. But you have an eye that really captures yeah. captures the beauty and the scenes that you, and, and that was really a, a sure. wonderful compliment. And, sure. And and then as this get together thing fell apart due to the guys who were organizing it, um, one of the guys decided he wasn't going to pay the models. Oh, wow. Because he didn't get to work with them, and I mean the weather conditions were yeah. terrible. Nobody, nobody wanted to work with them. I paid some money just because I felt bad. Yeah, and then he didn't want to pay the models. Anyhow, long story short, Gina's upset. Kim's like he won't talk to anybody. And now I'm I'm kind of in the middle of this. I don't want my friend's name drugged through the mud associated yeah. with this thing. So I, I, I went and had a man-to-man -man talk with this guy. And later on, it's just blunt as hell. Okay, you cannot do this because you're throwing me under the bus. Yeah. And so anyhow, I go, oh, okay, I'm going to pay, I'm going to pay, I'm going to pay. So finally, I called Gina up and I said, okay, Gina, you know, he's got the check, come on over. So when, when they get there, they're out front. They won't come in. They're out front. And... Now the guy goes, I want an assigned model release from the models. The models already left. Yeah. He didn't take pictures of them, but he wanted to. Oh, he took pictures of them. Oh, he did. Okay. But he, this was a film, film, yeah. film get together. He's there with his digital camera. Yeah, I okay. mean, in your face. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thousand pictures. Okay. So, so now he doesn't want to pay him because he can't get a signed model release. So I look at him and I said, you know what? If you don't give Gina, the money, I'm going to break your fingers. <laughs> I said, you have thrown me under the bus too many times here, and I'm not going to put up with it. I will physically hurt you. And this guy was a, this guy was a doctor of some kind. Yeah. And I said, look, I said, I won't put up with this. I'll find a chair or something, and I will beat you with it. And I was, I was just like, oh, I, I, was, I was just mad as hell. And so he's like, he goes... He goes, oh, okay, 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 okay. So he goes running out with the check. Gina, 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 here, here is it, here's the check. So, you know, I was standing, he gave the check, and, and, and I went up to Gina. I had gotten a chance to talk to Gina and Kim separately, yeah. and I, I explained to him what was yeah. going on. And I, I said, I said, I am so sorry about this whole thing. And Gina was really a sweetheart. She said, hey, I understand. I can see what's going on here. Yeah. It's not you're doing i see this person here is, is the issue and the problem yeah. and she goes i appreciate what you, what you're doing i got in my car and this was up oceano i was living in ventura yeah. i drove home and it took me an hour and a half two hours to get home i had the worst headache of my life oh yeah from from that and and but you know gina and kim are really really super yeah. so i can't wait if, to go back up if and, it wasn't for gina yeah if it wasn't for gina Kim would be a nobody. Yeah, she really. Not that he's not a, a good photographer. Yeah, yeah. But she's the one that knew how to market him. Yeah, she really markets well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She and she's such a sweetheart. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. Yeah. She's a, she's a, a gem to deal with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah she's the nicest person. And, and oh yeah, you know. well, he's a nice person. Yeah. but she's the. She's the driving the force. Driving force, exactly. like most of them are. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So so yeah. That's that's a that's a, a, a wonderful you know wonderful little story. But yeah. you know I mean we used to we used to get together at at meetings down in Fountain Valley, um, and we would come down and trade prints and and show prints yeah. to one another and you know those are <clears throat> those are some wonderful times. So it's been a while for us to get get back together so yeah why don't you guys tell uh 
tell everybody what's a little bit about what you guys have been doing and hmm. your life in the photography business, if you feel like it. Mm, well, I spent uh, about 43 years as a corporate photographer um, in shipyard. I spent a long time there. It, it was a great experience. It's like being an all-around photographer. You have to do everything. Parties, sh ship launches, um, repair work, everything. It has, it's, uh, it's an all-inclusive thing. So you, you learn a lot. Uh, and it's, it, it was interesting. It was an interesting operation. I ended up being only the second photographer there within the corporation. And, and, and once I left, that was it. They, they eliminated the position. Really? Yeah. And it turned out that uh, I'd been there a long time, so I moved up the scale a lot. Yeah. <laughs> were you able to do any personal work? Oh, yeah. When, when, you, I, when, when you were I, there? I spent a lot of time in the air in a helicopter. Oh, wow. Nice. So Because we, we're a shipbuilder, so we, okay. we had ship launches, you know, and then, and then we have to go out to sea trials to, to just find out how everything was working. And I, I, that was my favorite part. So I would always come uh, a certain route. Uh, once you've flying for 10 or 15 years with the same guys, you... You get a routine. They know your routine. So when I flew from the helicopter port to the to the shipyard, I did stereos out the out the helicopter. Oh, I like really? to have the door taken off, and I oh, okay. I like to I like to sit sideways out with my feet on the runner. Okay. And so you just have a harness you just hook on the back, you know, so, in case you don't fall out. So you don't fall out. Yeah, so, yeah. No parachute. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And so it's a fun, it's a fun thing. And then uh, I shot six seventeens too when I was out there, you know, because it made real nice panoramas. Uh, everything was uh, originally in film, all film, when we first started, but it switched over to digital. It was just easier and yeah. cheaper. Yeah. When I left, it was all it was all digital, you know. So, but it was it was it was a fun thing, and I uh, uh, spent a lot of time with this gentleman here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We spent twenty years in uh, in yeah, Death Valley, you know, going there every January, and it didn't make any difference if it was rain or cold. We were in Death Valley. We photographed a wedding. On top of the on top of the mountain, with a storm coming in. Yeah, it was cold as hell. Oh yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah. He was the musician. I was the photographer. <laughs> yeah, I played the, played the wedding march on a harmonica. Yeah, awesome, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it was a it was a really weird thing. How cool is that? Two the, friends. The yeah. preacher came from outside of uh, Las Vegas. He Henderson, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, well, he had a church. He had a business in Beatty. Yeah, so he nice. had a. He had a uh, real estate business. Yeah, yeah real estate yeah. business yeah. In, in Beatty. Yeah. Now, he was Japanese. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Now you've been collecting gear for a long time, Ken. Yeah, right? I, I'm actually a gear person. I like I like stuff. Yep. And uh, as, as we all do. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, so I, I I've got uh, a, a very terrible collection of stuff. Uh, it's uh, terrible. So I, I have a. Well, I call it a great collection. <laughs> really. You know, I have everything. I have, I have the usual 1220 and 1114s, 820s, and 717s. So I have all that stuff, you know, and that I have a, three regular circuits and one uh, electric circuit. Oh, really? And I've got uh, a lot of uh, pans. I like pan cameras, so I've got the, the wide pan and the 617s, the 69s. I've got all that stuff. Did you ever get into any, any studio cameras at all? I have, um, yeah. I actually have three. <laughs> <laughs> a loaded question. Huh? <laughs> I have three of those studio cameras. Just missed another one. Century, yeah. Yeah. Century, so I got three of those. But, you know, you get to a spot where you're running out of room. Well, yeah, with the stands and everything, those can yeah. take up a lot of they real estate. Yeah. I have a, you know, once I, once I retired, I had storage. I got storage to keep right. all that stuff. So right. I moved all that stuff to the house and God, you know, there's a wing lynch processor yeah. in in the garage, you know, and there's there's a lot of stuff. So now, now stuff. you have your personal camera story museum. Yes, I yeah. have all that stuff. And yeah. very, very little uh, uh no space display space. Sit. No display space. Yeah. No display space. Yeah. yeah. But I have a I I have a flat files in the front room. You know, and so all the prints, like your prints are in one of the flat files and mm -hmm. And so it's, they're they're by groups, you know how they are because it's just. Uh, and we uh, we actually were uh, in a a person who passed away, was a photographer actually, 
Uh, Danny, um, Danny, um, I forgot his last name. <clears throat> and he was a serious workshop person. He, he went to all the workshops. And, and he had enough money that um, he bought big prints. Oh, okay. So I, 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 I bought, out of 40 prints, I bought 37. Wow. Yes. Wow. Now, there were a uh, um, 2024 Ray McSavney prints. Oh, wow. 2024 John Sexton. He didn't buy the 1114s, he bought the big ones. Wow. And the uh, Barn Bomb. Mm hmm. Uh, there's, there's quite a number of them. So we, we, Loaded we had a, we had a load of them. <laughs> yeah, some, yeah, some wonderful My names. My wagon was riding home like that. <laughs> yeah, some wonderful names in, in, in that group. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's amazing. Well, you guys are my best collectors. I mean, my gosh, I just like, every time we get together, it's it's like I bring some work and, and you guys it's gravitate towards it. So I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I appreciate, appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I appreciate it. Um, so do we. We yeah. love it, loving the work. But. We look forward. We look, each time we look forward yeah. to getting more prints. Yeah. Yeah, and we, and we try to put this together for a year because then we got yeah. delayed by COVID. Yeah. So it was nice that, you know, I yeah. just said the heck with it. We're doing it. I'm going to do it in April. I'll send you an email and hopefully that's everything goes all did. right. Yeah. And that's, it worked out. We had to work it in between our doctor's appointments. Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, Me too. I got one when I get back, but I think it's in May sometime. So. But, I wish uh, I had just one in May. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. I'm a little you get sick as old now. as I am, you have them all the time. I'm sure so. I'll catch up to you here pretty yeah, soon. I'm a little I'll sick hope now, so but, uh, it's a uh, yeah, it's, it's a little harder for me. But uh, yeah, I'm, uh, it, it's it's glad tough, we've been here. tough to get out. But no, I'm I'm really happy that you know we we got together and and spent a nice day today. Yeah. And then tomorrow, you know, we're gonna I'll introduce you to my friend Vaughn Hutchins, and and I know you guys all like him. To that. And uh, he knows a lot about this area. He's been up here for 40 years, you know, photographing in the Redwoods. Yeah. And, and so he hasn't worked a lot down in, in Humboldt. He works mainly more up at Prairie Creek because, uh, you know, it's closer to home. Yeah. So he always looks forward to coming down here when, you know, when I show up. Yeah. yeah he worked in Arcata, but he lives north of there. Yeah. Yeah. He lives inland on, in Blue Lake, which okay, he takes two, take 299. On the way out, yeah, I've been across that nice road. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> that road looks like it's only going to take you an hour, and it takes you like five. If you can make it, and if you can make it in four, you're yeah, you're driving really, too fast. Yeah, you're a hero. <laughs> yeah, so, so Jim, what? I do uh, and a half. We we could probably spend the entire video talking about you <laughs> and <Right> your <laughs> your photographic experience, but I think uh, you know a lot of people maybe know you know your guys names but they don't really know you know the effect that you've had you know on me personally with your knowledge and your experience and i just pick up and absorb a lot of stuff <coughs> from being around you guys so uh you know it's 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 wonderful and i think more young photographers should be hooking up with people our age and uh and you know we're always yeah. willing to give everything we can to yeah well pass it on I've been at it a long time. A freelance photographer, friend of my dad's, when I was nine years old, asked me, he was buying a new speed graphic and asked my dad if it's okay if he gave me his old one. And then he took me, Gene Jordan, I always forget his name, Gene Jordan. Gene took a bath every year whether he needed or not. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what year was that, Jim? Uh, that was 1937, yeah. 38, yeah. 1938, yeah. yeah. So, 1938, there weren't a lot of films on, there were a lot of films on the market because there were lots of manufacturers. Mm. And some of them were really fast, like 50, speed of 50. <laughs> I but, like that. <laughs> but, but, the, but most of them were also chromatic. And so I, that's what I learned on. And uh, the nice thing about that was you could, of course, develop it under a red safe light. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I still do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I use a lot of x-ray film, and it's orthochromatic, and I develop it under a red safe light, and I develop it by looking at it. That's, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I finally discovered that young people can't learn that. If you don't learn that by the time you're 15 or 16 years old, you're too old to learn it. Mm-hmm. No, I, I tried to teach it to some of my students, they, they just couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. And 
I've seen it all my life, so I can. But yeah, I I started then, and Gene took me to his where he lived and taught me to load film and develop film, and and uh, the camera was set. You know, in those days, everything they did was uh, with flash bulbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so and uh, the uh, lens was all but locked. It wasn't really locked, but it was pretty darn stationary at the hyperfocal point, the point at which everything from half the distance to the to forever was in focus. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, the exposure was set, and all you got to do is put a, a number five flash bulb in and hit the button. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and uh, so that's how I started. Yeah, and then I, used to, I would go hang around the camera stores on Saturday mm -hmm. and listen to the guys that were there, just talking like we're talking. Yeah, yeah. And I learned a lot. I bought what magazines I could afford, yeah. but I couldn't afford many because they were usually either ten or fifteen cents a piece. Yeah, there's quite a few back then too. There were a lot. Yeah, mini cam. Well, um, there were a lot of them, and I uh, then when I was, uh, I guess I was about fifteen. Uh, my sister was working the counter of uh, a camera department in a department store, and they needed some a helper in the dark room downstairs. So I took that job. So my first job in photography was developing all of the roll film that came into the store. Uh, which wasn't as bad as it sounds because we put it on a big rack just before closing time, dump, dropped that rack down in the developer and went home. Yeah. And the next morning we pulled it out and finished it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people don't do that anymore. Yeah. Uh, people that write books don't, don't know about it. Yeah, they, yeah they haven't been exposed you know. to it for... <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, but it was a wonderful way because that way we were able to give prints back to the customer <laughs> over whether the negative was underexposed, overexposed, or normally exposed, we were able to give them a print yeah. from an automatic printer. Yeah, and that's what people are looking for, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, from there, I just uh, I just kept going and, and, and doing what I could and with what, what I had. I. I built a dark room when I was ten in the basement when I was ten or eleven years old, right next to my chemistry lab, which today I guess would be illegal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, I think the so. Chemistry kits itself, the kids today don't have any chemistry in them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but in those days, I could go to the drugstore. Yeah. Oh and, yeah. And buy chemistry you wouldn't believe because there was a whole there were hundreds of them lined yeah. up in a rack in front of the pharmacist. Yep. You know. Yeah. That's I spend my money there. Yeah, and uh, I never blew up the house, and my dad's <laughs> friends were always asking, "Jim, is blown up the house yet?" But so the two went together for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. Chemistry, chemistry and photography. photography yeah. And, and, and today, it still is a great help. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, uh, you know, and so I photographed what I could, and uh, and then you got into when did you get into like. Uh, large and ultra large format you know i mean i know you started <coughs> shooting four by five but when did you get like into eight by ten and I start, start well the larger the larger uh, sheet film i saw an ex exhibition of paul strand and ansel oh wow at the same time oh nice yeah all contact prints yeah yeah eight, eight by ten contact prints and so I bought a 507 camera. I couldn't afford an 8x10 mm -hmm. at the time. And, uh, and I still have it. Uh, nice. I used it. To, that's the only thing I use today. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw that camera. 507 Deardorff. Yeah. And uh, the price <laughs> today, that camera's worth about 10 times what I paid for. Oh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, <clears throat> that's when I started with larger format. And then as I grew older and, and started working and had a little bit of money before the ch children started coming along, yeah, uh, I bought an 810. And I've had, through my life, I've had I don't know how many different 8x10 cameras. Uh, but I, 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 I'm never able to keep a lot. i got to get rid of some to get another one. Yeah, I know that. So there one time... I had five 8x10 cameras lined up on tripods in the living room. 
And my wife said, what are you going to do with all those? I said, take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Family portrait. But uh, then, then uh, uh, I finally was able to get a 770. I've never had a lot of money I could have spent in, in photography. Right. Because I have never spent money that I own, that I earned in my normal living as a teacher. Yeah. I never spent that money on photography. Mm -hmm. From the time I was a child, all the money I spent on photography came from photography. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it still does. Yeah. Because I had I have four children and how many grandchildren? How many grandchildren do I have now? Yeah, my son in law is over. <laughs> I, I, eight or nine or ten, anyway, several grandchildren. Lots. And some great grandchildren. Yeah. But uh, still I don't I don't let my my interest in photography, which has been a hobby uh, yeah. uh, all this time, um, take from my family. Yeah. And that so I don't get in the position of one of, of a customer I had when I had a camera store. He used to buy buy new stuff all the time. And one day his wife came in with him. And she says, come on. And he had, I don't know how many cameras, 15 or 20 that he had bought. She says, how much are you giving for these? She said, I don't care what you give him. He's got to get rid of them because all he does is buy them and put them up on the shelf. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I never did that. Yeah, you know. buy something and you use it. Yeah. Well, and, and he was taking money out of yeah, uh, food out of his family. And yeah, I can't do. I don't let that happen. Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, <clears throat> I've always hung around photographers. When I had the chance as a child, I went to the camera stores and hung around and talk, listened to them talk, and sometimes I got invited to the to the local camera club meetings. Yeah, but not all the time. Just sometimes, and. Uh, uh, then I've done more. I, I have always had a dark room since that first one. I've never been without one. Yeah. When I was in college, I had a rig where I could set up a dark room in my, in my dormitory room. Oh wow! And I'd pay my pay my my roommates money to take his girl to the movie, so I could set up my dark room. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I'd take my my five or seven Graflex down to the fraternity and sorority houses on Sunday and take pictures of couples. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then during the week, I develop that film and print it, take it back the next Sunday and collect a dollar a piece. Yep. Yep. Big money. Yep. Now, this was in the f early 50s. Yeah. And uh, I've always had one in my house. I had one, my first dark room that I built beside the chemistry lab was behind a coal burning furnace in a dirt basement. <laughs> it couldn't be a worse situation. Yeah. But I learned, you know. I had one in an attic one time with no water. Yeah, you learn to make do because there's passion there for, yeah. for yeah. wanting to yeah. wanting to create to create My art. folks moved into a yeah. new house and it had an attic, no no basement, so I put one in the attic. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And uh I, where I am now, I used to use the one of the bathrooms when I was working, but then I, I built a dark room <clears throat> in the corner of the garage. The garage was wide enough so that the washing machine had space and then the car, you know? Yeah. Well, up towards the front of it, there was some space from the water heater to the front door. I built a dark room in that space, which is about, what, three and a half, four feet wide, mm -hmm. seven feet long, and I had two enlargers in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you knew how to use space properly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, and then I, I used to paint. I stopped painting and used that space, took over half the family room to build the dark room I have now. That's been there since 1980. Wow. One or two, something like that. I spent my life as a public school teacher and principal, and uh, then... Uh, I retired from that, and I was called to, to teach photography at Grossmont 
community college, and I spent 20 years doing that. And uh, uh, during that time, uh, I, it's when I got into the ultra large format. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I've associated with so many, so many well known and excellent people, photography. Yeah. Uh, for, for photographers and, and uh, I yeah, said, I, I don't want to name drop. I, I, yeah, then the names in in photography that you know, the people that you've known personally, it's just it's it's a long a, list. It's, it's a long list, and it's a wealth of knowledge and information yeah. that you gleaned from people like. And that. I was I don't know why, but I was able to just become friends with all of them. Yeah. And the most outstanding one was Al Weber. Yeah, that's what Al you're Weber. I think is one of the one or two best teachers of photography in the history of this country. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, Al used to, when, when Ansel was alive, Ansel Adams, and had his works, his summer deals in Yosemite, mm -hmm. he would go in and lecture. And he'd come out and tell Al, okay, Al, go in there and tell him what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Because Ansel, Ansel was a wonderful guy, but he was brilliant. Yeah. And he was too brilliant for most people to understand what he was talking right. about. Right, right. So we'd go, we'd go down to the house and have, have a few brandies, you know, and, and he'd talk. You know, great, great guy. Anyway, <clears throat> but he'd tell Al, go in there and tell him what I said. <laughs> well, my wife and I, one of my daughters was in school at the University of Santa of uh, California Santa Cruz and we wanted to go see her and I heard that this Al Weber was going to do a workshop on the go zone system so I closed school on Friday afternoon we drove up for a one day workshop all the way from San Diego to Santa Cruz nice that's a that's a <laughs> yeah that's a long long drive and that's the first time I met him yeah but for some reason from that day on, we were very, very close friends. Yeah. I never understood why, mm -hmm. but we were. Um, so he invited me to go to one of his, he did most of his workshops out in the field, not in the building, yeah. but out in the field. Yeah, that's really nice. And uh, he invited me to go and and uh, it surprised the, the dickens out of me. Uh, the first, first, night somebody that's we were at the Kelso Dunes mm -hmm. and some and uh, somebody said well I guess we have to get up early so the lights right on the dunes he says I don't know Jim and I'll talk about it and we'll make a decision <laughs> <laughs> it's like what <laughs> so, yeah yeah just out of the blue he didn't say anything to me before no. <laughs> so we did we talked and he came back and he said okay we decided Nobody is allowed on the dunes before 10 o'clock. <laughs> he said, you have to learn to photograph. No if you're in an area to photograph, you have to learn to do it no matter what time of day or what the light's like. Yeah. You've yeah. got to learn to contend with it. Yeah. Well, it worked except for one guy. We had this young Japanese man who was our kick in the pants, man. He was funny as he could be. So we wake up. At dawn, about, I always wake up early anyway. Look up at the top of the dune, and there he stood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, yeah. No, so that was an interesting one, though. There were, there were a lot of cows around there. Really? Oh, yeah. A lot, it was free range. Oh, okay. Free okay. range cow. Yeah, all right. <clears throat> and this one woman was there with her husband. And she was out collecting cow dung. <laughs> really? You know, the round pies. Oh, yeah, the big pies, yeah. Well, when it's dry, it makes a good fire. Yeah, oh, I'll bet, yeah. <laughs> but she starts throwing them on the fire and they weren't dry. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of good experiences with that. <laughs> oh, there, there's, there's so many fun times, stories from, yeah, from camping yeah. adventures. And but he and I used to go out and, and uh, we'd be at a workshop and he'd say, come on. And we'd go out by ourselves for a little while, and he'd have, he'd be making a picture, and he'd say, he had this problem, he'd say, you know, I want to solve that, and he'd tell me how he's going to solve that problem. Yeah. 
Yeah. I learned a hell of a lot from yeah. from him. Yeah. And uh, uh, he has many people in this country that owe their photographic life to him who have made their money, their life in photography. Yeah. And most of them give him good credit for it. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that's I think that's really really important. You know, it's yeah. you you credit the people who've inspired you and have helped You'll you. You find his name quite often. Yeah. In in the dedications of books. Yeah. Um, yeah. Al never published a book of his own, but he published, that I know of, 12 to 15 books of, photogra of photographs for other people, mm -hmm. up and coming people, and he would finance the printing of book books wow. for them. Wow, wow. And uh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, They're mostly uh, small yeah. monographs. Yeah. But uh, I have most of them. And. Uh, he just was one of those, he was a, a wonderful, wonderful person, a friend of mine, and uh, I've lost at least 10 of my photographic friends in the last four years. Yeah, that's what you were saying earlier, yeah, yeah. that's, that's... That's what happens when you get as old as I am. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I know, we all start kicking off before you do. <clears throat> yeah, all and my I... friends are younger and they die. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, I've, I've, I've forgotten who it was. Well, one of my friends who's now passed on, mm -hmm. one time says, don't get to be Jim's friend, you die. <laughs> 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 but sadly, it's yeah. kind of true, but I've been very, very lucky. I, I've had a good life and yeah. never had any money. Uh, I have a good wife. I have some wonderful children and grandchildren and, and uh, great-grandchildren and uh, friends. Yeah. I have lots of friends. Yep. And... Uh, yeah, our photographic community is is is, is pretty pretty tight knit, you know, yeah. especially when you're shooting large format, yeah. ultra large format, you yeah. know, that it's it's kind of a camaraderie. Yeah. We all understand the challenges of it, yeah, and Those. have a, have a have a great time doing it. And a lot of the former former students are still in touch. Yeah, well, um, that's that's awesome. The most interesting one is a young man from Chile. Mm -hmm. Chile, Brazil. I don't know. Anyway, it's one of those mountain countries in South America. And he already had uh, a doctorate in mathematics. Really? And he had been, he was coming back from Europe. He'd been over there studying. And he enrolled in my class. Mm -hmm. Well, I taught photography. At, for tw uh, at, basically, I taught the mathematical part. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I, you know, because when I go to take a picture, there's math going through my head. Right, right. And yours too. No, I don't. I, I, I was very, very bad at math yeah, as a young person, but now, and I apply it to photography, yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, but, so, but I don't realize it. <laughs> well, I used to get up in lectures and they, they go, What? Because it's, you know, kids aren't taught to do mathematics mentally anymore. Yeah, exactly. Or on paper either. Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, that's the way I taught. I had one girl that was a student for a mine as long as she could be at the at this college. Said, "You know what? First night in your I was in your class, you scared the hell out of me." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Why? All that math." <laughs> but but I do. I have a, a lot of them I keep in touch with. And this young man was in my class and. Uh, Toward the end, he says, you know, I want to go back. He lived in the mountain village and taught in a little school there. Mm -hmm. He says, I want to start photography there. And I need a couple of enlargers. He says, I can buy them. I can afford to buy them. But if I ship them back, they're going to get stolen. Yeah, yeah. What am I going to do? I said, I'm not really, well, why don't we take them apart? Mm -hmm. So... I found him two good enlargers and for practically nothing from friends that own stores and this oh, that, yeah, and the other. Yeah. And we did. We diagrammed them for him and okay. took them apart okay. and shipped them in about, I don't know, 12 or 15 different packages on different days. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, they would, like, what the heck is this? I still hear from him every once in a oh, while. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So that's, that's, you know, that's the good part of teaching. Yeah, and it's, it's you know, in this community, especially now with the internet, 
you know, we have a worldwide yeah. community, uh, which is really wonderful because I know I get a lot of people that send me messages and stuff, and I'm like, yeah, you know, who's this? Well, we're going to meet a man tomorrow. Yep. Von Hutchings, whose who's history, I guess, I have followed for 10 or 12 years at least yeah. because of the web. Yeah. He, he uh, was a lab technician at, yep. at, the, at the local university, which is the way I started at Grossmont College. Yeah, and I and I've always looked forward to meeting him, and so we get to do that tomorrow yeah. through you. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, no, it, it's a it's a wonderful thing, and I'm really really uh -huh. glad that you know I was able to put that together. Matt Stage was going to come yeah. try to join us, but his dad wasn't doing well, so we had to stay home. And of course, and take care I met, of his dad. I met Jim. We met Jim because we saw somewhere that there was going to be a meeting of ultra large format photographers and a little. Uh, community center kind of thing yeah. in in the LA area, so we said let's go. Yep. Yeah. And that's where we met. Yeah. And uh, I think we've become extremely good friends. Yep. Yeah. And we've been looking forward to this get together since before COVID nineteen hit. Yep. Yeah. And uh, then there've been some other problems that have slowed down our progress toward meeting yeah but to, to make to get back together again to make this happen was yeah. really i think special for for all three of us and, yeah. and it, it's really important and it's why i kind of wanted to get this you know on uh, to document it because this yeah. this is is yeah. really an important important moment cause, yeah well it is to us you know it's so it's needed. it's been it's been wonderful and uh, tomorrow's going to be an awesome day yeah well yeah. i've met an awful lot of people in all these years i guess I've been making photographs more than most people, longer than most yeah. people live. Yeah, absolutely. That's an amazing story. Thanks to my parents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I have met very few that weren't wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Very. Uh, I've run across very few people, even when I was teaching, and uh, when I started teaching. At Grossmont, at, at the community college, uh, teaching photography, they never had a had night uh, had a large format class at night mm -hmm. when I started one. At the first night, we had twenty eight cameras to in. First night, I had fifty two students show up. Wow, really? Yeah, and yeah. even with that kind of thing, I've I've rarely met a person through photography that I didn't like. Yeah. Yeah, fifty-two. That's, yeah. That's, that's, well, at first of all, when I said we ought to teach, you ought to teach this at night. It's never been taught at night. Well, we don't think it'll go at night. I said, let's have one. Yeah, I'll show you. That kind of struck. <laughs> it's like holy cow! They got more people at night than they do during the day. I did. Yeah. They never had that many people. Yeah. But these were people that could only come at night. Yeah. That had been just waiting. Yeah. And For the I still, I yeah. still come in. In fact. I'm going to see some of them next week. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. Yeah, it's funny. That 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 yeah. is that is really wonderful. Yeah. And you know, I mean, to we were talking earlier about the distance you guys had to travel and the distance that we had to travel, and we mapped it out, and it's about the same. It was kind yeah, of like about the same. This is like a midpoint. It's how, but you know, how, how crazy is that? Uh, thanks to Steve being able to come down and drive us. Steve's a, yeah. has been. Mm -hmm. has been through his life, he's been a professional driver, and yeah. it's been great to have him do that. And uh, yeah, sometimes I'm, my family thinks I'm too old to take to drive trips. You know? <laughs> well, I'm not old. <laughs> yeah, you I see, I got a few more years. I, I I feel the same way. You know, it's it's <laughs> like you know the 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 body's kind of getting there. You know, up there, but the mind is still like I'm. Well, well when, I, when I was your age, yeah, I thought, well, hell, I might, I'll probably be dead next year, you know. Yeah, but yeah, when I was a child, a little, I've I've done math in my head all my life. My dad was great at it, and I picked up some of that. The first math problem I remember solving, without pencil and paper, was how old I would be at the turn of the century. Mm -hmm. I was born in 1929, so I'd be 71. I figured that out before I started school. Yep. That's long gone. Yep. 
My next goal is tomorrow. <laughs> yep. You get this old, you can't say next week is yep. tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. And that's why yeah, we just yeah, be thankful for what we had today, what we have and, right now, and, and, and tomorrow hopefully we have some more. Tomorrow. And uh right. you know. Yep. For me. Have an awesome, awesome time tomorrow when we uh, meet up yeah. with Vaughn. We're gonna go shoot Humboldt uh, at Rockefeller Forest, yeah. which is a just an amazing place. Yeah. The largest uh, concentration of old growth redwoods in the world in this one forest. Hmm. It's it's pretty pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty awesome. Special. I've, I've I've been there, but not yeah, it's not much. It's been a long time. Just, I have a sister in Eureka. Just amazing. So I've been there, but it's been a long time. So I guess we could probably uh, wrap it up here at this point. Uh, I've talked enough. We kind